Hello Antichrist Magazine. This is George, guitars, keyboards and backing vocals. This is Chris, guitars. This is Marek, bass. Stefano, vocals. And we are Tablo Mort, a black metal band from uh, London, UK. Yeah. Thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to talk to you and uh, obviously to your fans and uh, followers. Much appreciated. Our debut album, Veil of Stigma, Book One, Mark of Delusion, was uh, released on the 28th of June this year uh, via Loud Rage Music. And uh, you can purchase it from their Bandcamp or you can also uh, download it uh, from all the major platforms such as uh, Spotify, uh, Deezer, and uh, you name it. iTunes, yeah. iTunes, it's literally yeah. everywhere. Uh, I'm pretty sure you will enjoy it. It's uh, something different, it's not like you typically you, you would typically expect from a black metal band. There's uh, all sorts of twists in it, there's a bit of uh, death metal, a bit of black metal, a bit of uh, doom metal, well primarily black metal, but there's, uh, there's, a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of things happening there. Uh, you can uh, also uh, notice some uh, orthodox kind of choirs, because uh, Orthodox, uh, Romanian Orthodox music is our, uh, one of uh, our major influences. And uh, yeah, um, a few things about the album. Uh, it was uh, recorded in uh, my own studio, so I was uh, producing the album. The drums were recorded uh, with uh, Jerry Sadowski. Thanks, Jerry, for helping us with Thank drums. You, Jerry. And uh, mixed and mastered at the Parlor Studios by Neil Haynes, who worked with a lot of. Um, Big names uh, such as Demi Borgir, Amorphis, uh, Napalm Death, uh, Bulgaria, the, uh, the Gates, you yeah. name it. <coughs> Anything you guys like to add about the album? I just cannot wait to play it live, you know, with with the band and make sure that we can get uh, the show, the best show out there, and you know, give the the best, the more, <clears throat> most powerful um, rendition of the music that you know we have recorded there. Yeah. So just for everyone to know. Uh, Stefano is our latest addition. Uh, he joined the band recently, replacing our uh, previous uh, vocalist, and uh, he's doing a great job so far with us. We really pleased with what he does, and uh, he will stay with us forever. Sounds good to me. So. Sounds good. The the lyrics in the album are very very particular in the sense that um, we don't take the standard themes that we have in a, in a black metal band uh, we'd like to take an approach a little bit more generic so we're not necessarily against any religion and not necessarily against any um, dogma uh, that as other bands you know have done uh, we have decided instead to focus the lyrics on a generic sense of oppression and what can we do to fight this sense of oppression you know to express how we are individually, how we are as a group, and what are our core beliefs. Um, so, you know, that, that's a little bit of a twist off to the standard, you know, lyrics that most black metal band yeah. has, where it's all Satan, 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 Satan. We don't want to, to fall into those cliches, and we try to take a little bit of a slight different approach to, to you know, real life situation, to real life experiences that we went through, and, and give our twist, you know, to match the musicality of what you know as a band we've produced with with the rest yeah. of our product just uh, just to mention uh, all uh, all the lyrics on the album were written by our previous singer yeah. uh, james andrews uh, thanks james for um, Thank all you, the james good time uh, we yeah. had together thanks for everything you've done a smashing job with this yeah. album and uh, we really appreciate it yeah i have very good a very big boots to fill because the album, you know, sounds incredible from a vocal point of view. Uh, you know, I hope to do the, the best I can, you know, to to do a, a good rendition of the of what James has done previously. And uh, you know, for the future, uh, le let's wait on what the future holds and uh, stay tuned because there are some interesting things in the pipeline. We've been looking around for a while, trying to find uh, someone to design our uh, album uh, cover artwork, art, yeah. yeah, cover artwork, and we couldn't really find anyone to uh, to do something that matches our music. 
and uh, while surfing the internet I found uh, this uh, artist from Russia called Alex Shadrin uh, from uh, Nether Temple Design and when I've seen his uh, paintings and all his artworks I thought like well this is our guy I mean it really really looked like what we we're looking for. We wanted something that resembles all the uh, orthodox icons and but at the same time had something uh, different in it, some sort of twist and I, I contacted Alex and uh, he was more than happy to collaborate with us. And uh, We had a really uh, difficult task we can say because you know he sent us like few examples of his art. They were all awesome, you know, we couldn't really decide which one we want, but finally we settled on the on the cover you can guys see now yeah. as, as an album. But the guy is incredible, really, really. But we wanted something a bit more personal, so even the, the artwork he sent us initially, you know, the one that you know as uh, the album uh, artwork. Oh, yeah. um, we uh, we sent it back to him and we asked him to tweak it and add a couple of bits and then he's added uh, more bits to it, making it you know look. He's put a bit of his touch in it and a bit of uh, our touches. And I think this uh, this artwork actually uh, talks for itself. It resembles all the music on the album. Yeah, it, it really it, it's represents a perfect, the album. Perfect, yeah, it represents you know, the that. album, and it's a perfect match. I mean, if you listen to the, if you look at the, at the album cover, you expect the music to sound like what it sounds. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, that's a good thing. Thanks again, Alex, for for designing the artwork. Uh, you know, I, and I personally like the fact that it's the art is non-descriptive, in the sense that you know, you look at the artwork and it could be anything. It's yeah, not exactly, the yeah. usual pentacle or a pentagram on a cover on a reverse crucifix. You know, you really need to listen to the music to to match it. You know, to the visuals that, yeah. that we have on uh, on and the it, CD. And, and it's, it's very similar to the lyrics in a way. Yeah, really. Because uh, even the lyrics, if you read the, the if you read the lyrics, they sort of plain, sort of religious, but there's actually a lot yeah. of uh, um, a lot of meanings and uh, in within those lyrics. And it's exactly the same with the artwork. You look at it, and the more you look at it, you, you actually see different things, see it in a different way. By by the time you read the lyrics, you actually and think about the cover. You actually realize that the cover has a hidden meaning, yeah. meaning the same as the the lyrics. Absolutely. So, yeah. It's all basically music and the lyrics and the cover become one. When you, you yeah, know, yeah, and I think we achieved that. Yeah. Our collaboration with uh, Loud Rage Music started from the uh, the very beginning, I would say. Because uh, our first album is uh, released by Loud Rage Music, and uh, thanks, thanks Adi, Adi is the the man behind Loud, uh, Loud Rage Music. Uh, thanks for all your help and support. Um, I think these days, without a record label, you can you can do things on your own, you know, as a band, you know, DIY. But I think the best way of doing it is via record label. Record labels uh, always support the artists. Not all of them, but most of yeah. the... Well, in the, the underground, at least, you know, if they come from the passion of somebody, you know, just like a one-man band type yeah. of label, you know, it's very rare that you have somebody just trying to rip you off. Uh, it comes, you know, just because they want to have music. And like yeah. you said about yeah. Cloud Rage, the good thing about this is that really, the guy didn't put any pressure on us, any expectation, he really literally wanted to help us with, yeah. the, with to promote the music he, he believed in and, and likes. So this yeah, is, he you know, believed in us and we, we believed in him as well. Yeah. I think it's uh, it's a great collaboration between uh, between us and Loud Rage. And uh, yeah, we want to <clears throat> we want to carry on uh, collaborating with uh, Loud Rage. You, you know, there's also the fact that Although a label is important and you know they do a lot of uh, um, good things, they've done a lot of good things for us as well. But I think it's also worth mentioning that you know we put a lot of efforts ourselves as local members yeah. to try to self-promote, to try to be up there, to try to spoke, to speak about the band, and you know make sure that we don't miss any opportunity as well. Uh, it's so easy you now with social media, and you know everybody has a laptop, everybody has an internet connection, so we can all go out there, make sure that we are seen, we're heard. And you know, the more and the, the more people will be able to listen to our music. Yeah, I think everyone has his own role in, in this. I think the band has to be equally involved in uh, promoting the album and the material oh, yeah, and whatever yeah. they do. You know, equally involved as the, the record label and the PR companies and uh, everyone. It's it's really important. And uh, we are the kind of uh, active band. You know, yeah. uh, doing a lot of stuff ourselves. 
and uh, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, you know, as the latest one arrived in, in the band, you know, I've only been here fairly for a fairly short period of time, but it's amazing to be with with a group of people that you know I can first of all call already friends because they're really good people to work with, but also you know there's a, a lot of effort that goes into everything we do and. Hopefully that will help us stand out and you know make sure that we, we can get better and better and better. From the very beginning, uh, we uh, we had in mind what our shows uh, had to look like even before we started play uh, playing live. The uh, the idea was to get to the, the public, into the audience, into a certain state and give him a show, not necessarily some good music. Uh, but Almost all... like a mass, like, uh, yeah. like you attend, you know, some really, you know, spiritual... Yeah, you want, you want people to, to remember yeah. you by, yeah. you know, not necessarily, I mean, entirely by your music, but by the, the show you, uh, you offer them. It's literally like an act, you yeah. know, you get yeah. people in there and you show them theatrics, you exactly. give them some good music. So yeah, I think it's really important. I mean, our show involves uh, all sorts of uh, stage outfits, makeup, um, props, and props. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, we, we, we candles. Just, yeah. and we just want you know everybody to feel part of a performance. I think you know I can speak for everybody in here that we just we don't want just to go out and and do music, but everything needs to come as a package. Yes. Uh, you know, your stage yeah. present, your theatrical performance, your music. Uh, you know the graphics that we use, the settings that we use. Yeah. You know, if I just wanted to listen to perfect music, I'll probably just listen to the CD. We don't want that as a band. We want everybody to have an experience when they come to see the band. And which show, you not know, forget, guys, it would be very tricky for us as well. Yeah. Because as you said, we don't want to compromise. So sometimes, if we're gonna play the gig and we can't use our whole setup yeah. and everything, we simply probably won't play it because we want to give the best of the best for you guys. Yeah. yeah we, uh, so far, we had to refuse yeah. a few gigs. And it's Purely not, on this basis. Yeah, that it's, we it's not necessarily yeah. a good thing to refuse uh, to refuse yeah. gigs, but when uh, promoters or uh, agents do not allow you to bring your full production, which we can understand as well. Sometimes we, we, we it's for the yeah. safety reason or whatever. Yeah. Some venues can you but know, we, uh, this or whatever. We would like for all our yeah. live uh, live shows to be able to bring all our equipment, all uh, the our props, to the same package or. Well, not the same package because it will get better and better. I bet we're gonna have more and more yeah. stuff in the future. Uh, but yeah, it's. But if you ever come to our show and you see our show and you're gonna be in it, you will understand why we don't want to compromise. Yeah, and you so. you you'd want to see yeah. us again <laughs> doing the same thing. You don't want to come and see us uh, yeah. stripped down if you want yeah. without exactly. all our props and. Uh, and to be honest, yeah, we don't. We have a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, and to be honest, we don't want to do it ourselves. You know, we, we joined this band because we want to to depict something in a very specific way. If we just wanted to show up, you know, in jeans and t-shirts and just play some music, we'll probably do something else. This is not the reason why yeah. we do this. I mean, it's fine. There's, there's a lot of bands Absolutely. doing Absolutely. that, and there's yeah, nothing wrong with it. But exactly. that's that's not what we do. That's not us. And basically, it goes back <laughs> to what Joe said in previous question about the lyrics and artwork that. This, all things are connected, you know, our performance and lyrics and artwork and, you know, our props, our outfits, everything, basically, so... Yeah. So, yeah. if you want to, you know, to find out more about the band, listen to the music but come see the shows, because that's where you will probably see everything come to life and you will get yeah. the most authentic idea of what we want to bring to a stage. Okay, that's uh, that's a good question, and I always like these kind of questions. You know, uh, epic or epic moments or fails. It's uh, what it's... went wrong. Yeah, what, what, what went wrong? Yeah, we uh, we uh, we had a few actually. Uh, probably the uh, the funniest one was uh, the one at our album release party in uh, in London at Nambuka. Not uh, funny for me. Well, <laughs> yeah, we but well, we can laugh now. So. Yeah, we, we can laugh. You know, looking back at it. Yeah. Uh, so what it was, uh, we decided to take our wireless systems uh, into the into the venue. The venue is not a very big venue, and uh, the stage is pretty small as well. So yeah, we decided to go wireless for this gig. 
uh, unfortunately because of all the frequencies in there because of the small space as well um, Marex wireless and Chris's wireless crossed uh, frequencies or something's yeah. happening there and at each point in time you're hearing either the guitar or the bass but never both of them and that and it was streamed live on Facebook and you, yeah, yeah it was stream, streamed live, yeah. live on just Facebook just to add a bit of more pressure for us yeah but <laughs> actually I mean for whoever doesn't know the songs I mean it sounded yeah. probably bad for us as a band because we knew what was happening but for the listeners nothing was necessarily wrong because no one knew what they were supposed we to sound fix it, uh, and we, we that's, that's the other thing we couldn't fix it for five songs because the stage was so small um, also Chris, the way our Chris was the one also. standing the furthest from the uh, from our main unit yeah um, and he couldn't connect to a, uh, to a wired connection so going from wireless to uh, to wired Um, so, albums that recently impressed me, I have to say certainly latest release from Mayhem, very different from the 1990s sounds that they used to have and, you know, and everybody know, but very aggressive, very powerful, takes a few lessons to go, to go through it and understand every, every shade of it, which I find really interesting. Likewise, the latest Satyricon, I found it quite, quite a good album, but I know myself and when it comes to music, especially extreme music, I tend to go back to 1990s, uh, you know, big names such as Emperor, uh, Immortal, um, and you know, everything that we're well, well aware of. Uh, I, I tend to go back to those and you know, and uh, refresh my memory as much as I can. I can say first as, uh, that comes to my mind is Rivers of Nile. The latest album is really great. It's not black metal genre, it's more death, progressive death, but it's just a beautiful album. I mean, guys, just go and listen to it. There's like saxophone and other instruments add to it, but it's just complex and beautiful. And it's a very mature album. Mature album. I know that. Yeah, if you compare it to the previous one. Yeah, releases, some yeah. fans of them, yeah, I know they maybe they criticize this album because it's not like the previous one, but it's just amazing piece of music for me. So, yeah. And I had the opportunity to see them live. Yeah, go for it, guys, and just listen to them. I recommend this album. Yeah, a yeah. lovely album. Yeah. yeah, that's one of my favorites. I wasn't going to mention this one anyway. Yeah. Uh, and we recently one. listened to this on George's birthday. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. My uh, my favorite releases uh, recently. It's a it's a difficult one because I listen to all sort of music from. Uh, like black metal to uh, slam and death I think oil. that's what George says, sorry for interrupting, it's really important that I want to put on this point that we really listen to a lot of music guys, it's not just yeah, black metal, a lot of it heavy, but we listen also from ambient to even jazzy stuff, a lot, it's very yeah, like it's and we, not close classical music, classical you know, music. and we have yeah. some guilty pleasures as well. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. but you know, that's what's interesting coming in the band, you know, as, uh, as recently, and you can see those influences yeah. and you know meeting the people you can actually understand why certain songs are, uh, sound a certain way and uh, you know that that will definitely be interesting i suppose in the future as well because we can bring more and more you know and of that and not actually feel that we need to match a stereotype with the sound and you yeah. know just be free to put whatever we feel is right for us at the right moment yeah so going back to the favorite releases because i still didn't want yeah. to speak about mine Yours. Oh, yeah. Yours first. <laughs> okay, so uh, I would say uh, they don't have to be necessarily released this year, but I can't say I like anything in particular. I don't even know if my favorite one was released this year actually. Is Wada's latest release, uh, oh, Cult, yeah, Cult of yeah. the Dying Sun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think that's uh, an absolutely great right. album with yes, a different vibe. Right. I mean, you listen to all this black metal around, and there's, there's plenty of good bands, but Wada stands out. It's just it's just a different thing. It's probably the fact that they come from America and uh, yeah. you know the music is different over there. I don't know exactly the reasons why, but I love this Absolutely, album. Yeah. It I sounds agree. very similar to the previous one. Well. However, you can see the way they progress. Yeah. You know, the sound got better on this one. I absolutely love it. Uh, and another one I can mention too, I think, uh, is a Deathcore release. Is a Versions Crown uh, Xenocide. I think it was released last year or a couple of years ago. Fantastic album, absolutely brilliant. And there's quite a few other good albums, but this this album for me is a masterpiece, and I love it. I love the vocals on it. I love every single bit of this album. Yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah, like, uh, like you said uh, earlier, we all have our guilty pleasures. So mine is uh, 
progressive metal. Uh, that's not guilty pleasure. It's still, <laughs> still heavy, so still metal. Therefore, yeah. I guess that's why one of my favorite bands in uh, black metal is uh, The Vegan and Freiheit. Mm -hmm. I hope I pronounced it correctly. It's, it, the album would be Stellar, which is very deep and melodic and technical. Yeah, re really good album. I mean. I like their Vega. I, I, I've been, yeah, I've, I've right. been following this band from the, the very, very beginning uh, since they released their first demos, and I was completely blown away yeah. by the, the stuff they do. And uh, I yeah. found them guys thanks to you. I found them because you know I, yeah. I admit I wasn't aware of this band, but you told me about this. And yeah, Especially you know the the album uh, Stella Chris was mentioned, yeah. and uh, the latest one. Uh, Finister, Finister, I don't know how you pronounce that word anyway. Absolutely brilliant. You know, jazzy chords, jazzy progressions with blast beats, aggressive vocals. Everything's good about this band. And whoever haven't heard about this band, just recommend it. Yeah, yeah as you can see, guys, you know, it's, it's really hard to say these days, like to choose one favorite album because it's so many great bands. There's so many great music coming out almost monthly. That yeah, that you can see even now we just we just yeah. tell you like few bands. Right, future future plans. There's uh, quite a lot going on in um, in our camp. Uh, first of all, we're gonna release some new material, and the plan, you know, the short term plan, uh, if you want, is uh, for us to release at least a couple of singles and then uh, at one point uh, late next year or the following year want to release uh, part two for Veil of Stigma but at the moment stay tuned for this um, for this new singles coming out <clears throat> uh, we already recorded the drums for uh, three songs uh, for one of them uh, we finished recording uh, we finished tracking the guitars uh, yesterday so uh, tomorrow we're tracking the bass yeah. and then uh, probably at one point next week uh, uh, we are going to uh, record the vocals. That will be a good uh, introduction for, <coughs> uh, for the audience, uh, you know, a good introduction for uh, Stefano. Uh, he, will, uh, he will smash it. He will, uh, Thank you. Yeah, he will. He yeah, will uh, uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward because you yeah. know it's it's always difficult when you get in a band just after an album release right. so you know you have big shoes to do you know kudos to James for the vocals that he has done on uh, uh, on the album you know massive work I'm, I'm a big fan of what he's done uh, but I also want to do better I'm sorry but that's you know what every musician wants to do I want to do better I want to do that's you what know want to do. Uh, yeah. uh, and we want to, be, to get yeah. the biggest sound that the band has had so far out so you hopefully will enjoy it as well yeah, for this uh, for this uh, new releases, um, I'll be taking care of the the production, and I think mixing and mastering we're still uh, looking around. But for me personally, I would choose to work with Neil Haynes again if he's available to work with us. It's good to have you in the for Yeah, we, we we didn't approach him yet, and we didn't discuss because yeah. obviously we didn't finish the uh, we didn't complete the, the recording process. Um, but yeah, it would be a pleasure to work with Neil again. If he does a uh, job, you know, equally as good as the one on the uh, uh, on the album, we'll be uh, more than pleased. Um, live gigs, <coughs> we yeah. have live gigs, but yeah, to, to go through. So you have more details than I have. Uh, yeah, we uh, we have a few uh, confirmed already for next year. We have a couple of uh, good uh, and interesting festivals. The uh, the most interesting one is um, Legions of Darkness. No darkness, yeah. Yeah, it's a. It's interesting because it's in, uh, in the middle of the forest and it's with a, a really limited capacity. I think it's 180 people. Yeah, yes. um, so yeah, we're going to be playing that. We'll also be playing um, another festival uh, here in UK called yeah in Cardiff called the Eradication Festival in uh, <coughs> in May. And uh, we also have a few other one-off gigs uh, in the pipeline. Uh, nothing confirmed 100%. Obviously, because of our complex setup, everything has to be worth it, you know, yeah. from a logistics point of view. And our our logistics are really, really complex, and it costs a lot to take all the stuff there and there for one of gigs. Uh, we intended to do some uh, we intended to do some touring as well in the in the near future. Uh, 
uh, but until we find like full package that's uh, that's worth it we're gonna stick to um, this uh, this small gigs and as you said <coughs> all the other gigs are 100% confirmed we don't want to share it just yeah we, we, we sure can't share that there's, there's a few other big things uh, exciting happening. things yeah exciting things happening yeah. but we can we can't share them uh, yeah, yourselves yet, yet. but we uh, we're gonna break the news uh, soon when uh, they'll be announced officially you know by the promoters in the first place and then uh, we can make the announcements ourselves yes. uh, anything else guys just come and see us just yeah. come and see us you know we'll, we can only promise that we'll do the best in our ability to make sure that you exactly. You have a good night out and you get an amazing performance. Yeah, thanks a lot for being, for giving us the uh, the chance uh, you, to talk to you. Thank you very much. Thanks, thanks guys.